So I will give a brief introduction about what we're going to cover today. So um, this is a part of the series called um, Copilot Developer Camp. We've been doing this in the coming to calls in the past couple of weeks. Uh, in today's session, we will be we, we will basically continue uh, building custom engine agent scenario we've been bu building in the past couple of weeks. Uh, and so far, we, we actually achieved a lot um, in custom engine agent. We went through building the agent from scratch uh, uh, using Azure AI Foundry. We've actually uh, integrated some of the deployment models in our uh, agent. We brought our data using Azure AI search, and then we customized our agent uh, using Powered by uh, AI Kit. Today, we are focusing on authentication, everyone's favorite topic. Today, we are going to actually integrate um, SSO in our agent, and it will be a lot more meaningful in the upcoming session because after we uh, integrate SSO in our agent, um, the next is going to be integrating some actions to make a couple of graph calls in our um, agent. That means that, let's say, agent will be creating a list of items for us, and we will be asking agent to uh, perform one of the actions, which is sending an email or maybe sending a Teams message or maybe adding the items in uh, to-do list by just making a graph call. So this is going to be a lot more meaningful uh, once we actually step into the actions. But today we are particularly focusing on authentication. First, I want to show you what we are achieving, and then I will step by step show you how you can achieve integrating authentication in custom engine agents. So what we're doing today in particular is actually, um, let me play this video really quick. I wanted to make sure that we don't lose any time. So I'm just going to show you in the video. What we're basically doing is actually we are authenticating the user using SSO. We are consenting some of the required permissions. And after that, the agent will recognize your name and you will be able to perform some of the Microsoft graph calls, which is really, really important for scenarios like ours. Um, so this is the basic introduction I wanted to take you through. And I want to highlight that um, these are all available in Copilot uh, Developer Camp. So first of all, I want to show you what we are going through. Um, if you go to AK.ms Copilot Dev Camp, you will be landing in this page, which is our uh, brand new UI. If you've been following Copilot Developer Camp, we had a different UI and now we've updated it with a much uh, better look. And if you go to build a custom engine agent, you will be guided to the place where you can build custom engine agent from scratch. We've been doing that since day one in this comment to call series. We've completed a setup. We've completed first custom engine agent, and we went into indexing your data with Azure AI search and bringing data over to your custom engine agent. And we updated the look and feel of the agent using Powered by AI Kit. Today, we are focusing on adding single sign-on authentication. Uh, I want to take my I want to thank my uh, colleague Rabia. She actually built the authentication piece of this lab, and uh, I should give the credit to her because authentication is usually the most complex bit in the agents like this. But after achieving this, there are a lot of scenarios unlocked with it. So it's quite important to integrate with SSO so that you can actually integrate your enterprise-ready agent with a lot more complex scenarios. Okay, so what we are doing today, authentication. So the first, what we are going, uh, I will walk you through what we are going to do, and then I'll show you the code a little bit. So the first thing we have to do is basically adding the uh, AAD manifest JSON. After we define what is in our uh, manifest, then we have to basically define everything in an, our local YAML file so that it, the uh, AAD app will be a part of the lifecycle um, when we hit F5. That means that Teams Toolkit will be generating the authentication app for us. And after that, um, we basically need to add SSO bit in our manifest by just updating web application info. And then we will update the SSO code, uh, the application code for SSO, where I will walk you through what exactly we need to include. Uh, oath start and oath end HTMLs are required. 
And finally, we're going to update index TS um, to be able to actually add the authentication in the agent bit. And finally, the source code of our agent app.ts will require msal config where we, we will do the actual authentication. Let me walk you through the code really quickly. So, and this is the important bit. So what we've done to be able to achieve this, and I'm using the version of Career Genie where we integrated the authentication here, Compared to uh, the Career Genie integration, which didn't have authentication, what we have uh, in this step is basically first, adding the AD manifest JSON, where we can define what, what kind of uh, sign-in audience we're looking for, the permissions we need, et cetera. So this is a really important step to go through. After you add this uh, file in your project, the next step is basically going into teams app.local.yaml. This is the file where we, we actually need to define um, creating the AD app for ourselves. And once we define uh, the AD bits in the YAML file, we are actually automatically creating these without needing any going back and forth between the entra. So what we did here is basically provisioning AD app create. And so that Teams Toolkit will be automatically creating all these um, keys for us and it will be creating AD app for us so that we can utilize it. After adding AD app slash create, next step we need to go through is basically AD update where we need to utilize the manifest uh, JSON. And finally, we have to include the keys of AD app client ID in here. So that means that while we're passing this, if we need to use this, we actually need all of the setup in adapter TS and config TS as well. So config TS is the place where we actually bring all the keys over to code. If you are adding anything in local.yaml, you also have to update the config.ts as well. Anyhow, once you updated Teams app local.yaml, the next step for us is updating the manifest. Mani manifest our Teams app, our custom engine agent should know that we have an authentication step SSO. That means we don't have to pop a, a URL or etc. We are just going to do authenticate with single sign on inside our agent. So updating this step with um, web application info will give us the opportunity to um, basically trigger the authentication step in uh, our agent. And after that, we need to uh, add these files within a new folder. In a source folder, under source folder, we actually create a new folder called public. Inside public, we're going to add auth uh, start.html and auth end.html. If you work with SSO before, these are pretty default uh, files where we need to use these to be able to pop up uh, the uh, login page. And after we included all these, the final one of the final steps is basically updating index.ts. In the index.ts is the place where, where our bot, our agent, is getting into communication from Teams to our uh, URL, API URL. So if you look into the generic bot uh, server listen, uh, after we listen server and we listen the port that our bot is assigned to, the next we need to do is server.get, which will pop the out uh, start and HTML. That means that now authentication is part of the um, bot, bot flow where we can actually utilize SSO right away. Let's say that we've integrated all of this configuration, but how does SSO work with a smart agent, generative AI agent? Uh, because, you know, currently we are not handling everything with a bot. We are handling everything with a smart custom engine agent. How things actually work in custom engine agent code. That's the final step I want to walk you through. So in the previous weeks, we've learned what we do with model, prompts, planner, and how we integrate those to be able to handle generative AI in our custom engine agents and teams and co-pilot. Today, what I'm going to show is how we actually handle authentication in agents like this. 
which means that agents, for example, utilizing Teams AI library to be able to integrate with generative AI. Uh, okay, so what we are doing here is in addition to um, storage, planner, and AI bits in the application, the next step we need to include is authentication right inside the application piece we add. Uh, remember, the application piece is actually the piece where we engage with generative AI and all of the, let's say, uh, Azure AI search, uh, source code, the RAG, uh, the, uh, all of the steps, all of the smart steps we add in, such as citation, etc. So the application piece requires a specific authentication where we define settings as graph, we need to define the scope, and currently scope is very default because we are not actually getting anything more than the profile information. Um, but we will actually uh, add more scopes later in the last call that I'm going to have because we are going to handle some actions in that code. But we actually utilize MSOL config here and and we define client id secret and authority and after we define all that we need to define sign in link and finally uh, end on invalid message true once you integrate this bit that means that your app now has the authentication set up in then the next step is basically utilizing the authentication in our application which means that actually calling um, app.authentication. That means that Teams AI library provides us some sort of an easy way of consuming authentication in our apps. If you do app.authentication.get, that will be uh, giving us the opportunity to, for example, do on user sign in success. That means that we can actually utilize the single sign on right, right inside the AI application. Here, we are uh, basically throwing some of the success information using um, send activity, but we're also saying that we're actually also throwing the token here that gives us the information about the user display name. There are a bunch of other things you can do with authentication. For example, you can throw the failure uh, message. If authentication is failed, you can do get graph again on user sign in failure. This time you can throw the error and show what is wrong. Um, this is a pretty basic setup, but you can do a lot more than just um, doing the authentication and showing the user uh, name. For example, you can do app uh, authentication sign out user, which means that if anyone performs sign out, then they'll be able to uh, sign off from the authentication process and they'll have to repeat uh, the sign in process. And right after you integrate with authentication steps like this, the next step is going to be basically utilizing all of the productivity items available in Microsoft 365. This basically opens up the door for all of the data available in Enter 365. Um, that means in the next steps, in the next session, I will show you how you can utilize the authentication, call graph, and uh, perform some actions using generative AI. So this is all I wanted to share. If you have any questions, I can uh, stay a little bit longer and help you in the chat as well. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.